In this video we are going to talk about uh, functions in R. Uh, functions, uh, they are a way to m make your code more uh, organized, you can isolate parts of the code and so it gets easier to test, uh, especially code that you already know that's working, you can just keep them away from the middle of your code and it can improve the performance of some operations also and if, if you don't really don't understand how this works right now uh, don't worry because when your code grows larger you will start to feel the need of like having parts of your code separated from the code that you're dealing with because if not it gets very messy ideally you should always uh, is split a function separate from your code when you, when it can be split. For instance, if you develop a, a function, I don't know, to to improve your weather data, you should always try to split it out of your code because it does something different from what you're doing in your code. It's like a modularity thing, and and th there is many advantages on on doing that correctly, but. I believe you will see when you start like programming more. So let's start with a very basic function. Um, this function is echo, just like repeats what you what you wrote. So let me just create the function. So the comment that creates the function is the comment function, right? You 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 assign a function to a name, and these are the parameters is like messages that you're passing to this function the inputs to this function this function function doesn't return any output it just prints what is passed to it so if I execute uh, echo high oops echo high it answers me back high and let's talk uh, now about scope scope it's because it's important because the the variables that you create inside of a function they are not visible outside so let's create a new function echo and now we execute it okay but look here i assign the value 5 to the uh, variable x but this value is only valid inside of this function. If I ask what is the value of x, it, it, it says that the value is not found because it was it only existed inside of the function. That's how functions kind of isolate the problems of your main code. Uh, but the opposite is not true. If I if I create a, a variable, then I I create this echo function that now is not echo anymore. It just prints the value of x see the value is 10 it's when when you declare a function uh, you when you declare a value outside of the function and you try to retrieve this value inside of the function it still sees the value outside but i really don't recommend to do that because this can create a lot of function i uh, a lot of problems i recommend to you to only use variables that you or you passed by by parameters or you created inside of a function don't don't do that 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 will only create trouble for you. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about, about parameters. Let's create this simple function which sums 5 to a number. It's just to, to illustrate the, the concept. So the function receives a variable called n which is the, a, a simple number and then I return this is the output of the function I return n plus 5 and so w when I execute this command sum 5 here passing the 5 so this will result in 10 this 5 is assigned to this variable n here and then the function is executed and then the value is returned so here I could like assign this to a variable I don't know x is equal to that so now x has this value, you see here. So uh, you can always see the code of a function in R just by typing its name without the parentheses. See here, it just returns the, the, the code. Like 
you can do that with any of the R functions. Uh, any command of R will return something if you just execute it that, like that. But sometimes it's like that, you know, like sum. It, it doesn't show any code because this means that this the code that executes the sum function is actually in another language like Fortran or C. So it doesn't show anything here. But uh, some others like write CSV you can see here all the code to implement it, uh, the code implemented for for this function. Of course, you could also change this code if you wanted. Although, if you change the code, it will only be valid while you, your R is still open. When you close it and the new workspace is created, it it will not be there anymore. Um, so let's talk a little bit about named parameters. So. Now I will create this function math. It's just it's just an example. Like it's a function that receives a number, and then another parameter is the the number to sum to this number. And I I uh, I not only create a name for it, calling it sum, but I also assign um, a, a default value, which is zero. Uh, when you when you assign a default value for it like by making it uh, assigning a value to it it becomes an optional parameter also so you you don't need to use it if you don't want to and here i create a number that multiplies the number that you passed by and also the default value is 1 so if you don't pass anything it doesn't do anything because the sum with zero will be the same number and multiplied by one will be the same number and then I return the w what I say okay so here you see like when I say math 5 sum with 5 it returns 10 and it, it just assumed that the value of mul mul multiplication is equal to 1 but if I if I instead of um, assign a value to sum I call the same function assign a value to um, to mult. Then it um, it multiplies the value and completely ignore the sum uh, value. So you can always, or you can, for instance, call it without without anything and doesn't do actually in this case doesn't do anything. But you see, like when you give a default value to a parameter, it becomes optional. And you can you can name it like that, and then you say like I want the va the parameter sum to have the value five, or you can use the same order which um, in which they are declared here. You see, like the, the first parameter is the number, the second parameter is the sum, and the third parameter is the mode, and if you don't say a name they will be evaluated in the same order so if I no, let's put this for so see it, it was uh, s uh, summed with 2 and multiplied by 4 and another important thing is like to create a, a, a good code a good environment for you to programming is to go separating all these functions that you create in a different file and a file that tells the name of what they are like say, let's say a file with uh, weather functions and then you put all these functions inside of another file and you use the command source to what, what the command source does is execute all this code which is in another file so if you only have functions there and not real code just the function declarations it's like you're importing all these function declarations to your environment and then you get a very clean code, you know, completely separated from the other stuff that you already you already finished. So it's a very, it makes the code, uh, the R code really much simpler. Um, so uh, as an exercise of this class, uh, I would like you to create a, a function that gets a vector of temperatures could you could use the ones that we have been using and it should return a vector of temperature w of the same size but without gaps uh, if you use the get function for more time 
uh, usually I just use the default that I created, which is uh, two years. But if you use for, you know, I don't, you know, like 50 years, it will return a lot of gaps, which are which are the I don't know the days that they didn't collect the data or the sensors had trouble or whatever. So we need to fill this data before making any analysis because if not, like the our our comments will not work with with a bunch of NAs in the middle of this data. So I, I would like to have a function in which it, I have this vector of temperatures and if, if one temperature is an A, it tries to make a mean of the previous value and the next value. If one of them is not there, then you just use one, for instance. If the next value after the one that is an A is also an A, it, you just repeat the one previously, the, the previous value. Uh, that function will be necessary for the project, so I'm, I'm not going to to show how to how to do it right now. I will just in the next video is about plotting. The next after one is about advanced da data manipulation, and then in the next one I'm going to just like go over all the functions of the project, and and that will be one of them. Okay, so see you in the next video. Bye.